Hey guys, A.D. Wheeler here from A.D. Wheeler Photography and House Light Mender at the Arcanum. I just thought I would jump into Lightroom CC 2015 or Lightroom 6 as it's known and do a little comparison in the new HDR merge feature that was included in this latest release. So uh, normally I use the 32-bit uh, HDR with uh, Photomatics and the Lightroom plugin. Uh, I like the results that I get. It gives me a more natural looking image and uh, there's no tone compression so it comes back into Lightroom and allows me to uh, to handle the tones all from the standard Lightroom controls and I really like that. I think I was with everyone else in the excitement uh, over the new uh, merge to HDR right inside Lightroom and uh, it was kind of one of the things that I was really looking forward to the uh, ability to merge frames and exposures and then move on and do other work while it was working in the background I think it really helps my workflow so I set out to do a bunch of tests with this new merge because there isn't a whole lot of information that I can find on it on whether it's 16-bit uh, or 32-bit or uh, whatever I just want to do side-by-side -side comparison for you guys uh, using this image here of mine and give you some insight so you can make a decision for yourself. Kind of made my decision, but uh, you guys can judge for yourself from this. So I took this photo at Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York during a, a recent photo walk. And it's just a simple three exposure HDR. It's handheld, so um, there's some movement here. So if you look at the three image, you can see there's just a very little bit of movement. It was a nice day, so the exposures are fairly quick. But there was movement here. So this is a really good challenge for the HDR merge module to see if it can auto align the photos and if it can get rid of any ghosting or anything like that and just an overall look at the quality so I've gone ahead and, and already merged these uh, I did a, a few different merges to get the best settings that I possibly could so this ended up being no auto tone and auto align was turned on and de-ghosting was maximum. So that's how I handled this. There was some movement in the trees I needed to get rid of. So the resulting image is this. Now I haven't done any processing. I've just basically loaded this thing in and just dragged the histogram to the middle so that it would be a nice, you know, well-rounded photo. And this and it does compress to a DNG. So the size of this file is very small, but I couldn't tell by looking at this, whether it was 16-bit or 32-bit, if I load it into Photoshop, it automatically you know, converts to 16-bit, so I, that doesn't help me. The one thing that I know that, that will not handle 32-bit files is on one's perfect effects. And if I try to load my normal 32-bit files in there, right from Lightroom, it will reject them. But the DNG file that I've been told was 32-bit, it loads right in. So then I begin to think that maybe it's not a 32-bit file. Maybe they're handling it some way differently. I don't know yet. But what I do know is I've done a side-by-side -side comparison between a Photomatix file and a HDR merge file from within Lightroom. And I want to show you those results. Okay, so um, we're going to do an XY comparison between the two photos. Here's my Photomatix photo here on the right and my merged file within Lightroom on the left. And I'm just going to click the XY here so we can look at these side by side. Okay, so I tried to balance these as best that I could for exposure and everything. There's a little bit of differences, and I think that's just in the way the file's created itself. To me, a lot of the shadows are more present in the Photomatix photo, and they're a lot cleaner. So there, you know, there are some options that you can click in the Photomatix Lightroom plugin that you can't obviously select with the uh, Adobe version. So I want to just show you some areas of the photo that I think uh, show what this is capable of. So let's take a look first of all of how it handled the ghost issue with this photo. So here on the left is Adobe and you can see there's a little bit of ghosting. It might be difficult to see in the video. I'm hoping it's showing up just nice. Uh, but it for overall it did a really nice job you can see that there's just a little bit going on but you know that's what was in my exposure so that's kind of the way that it turned out uh, the biggest thing is, is as we move more here to the right is that you can see that there's much more detail in the shadows and the contrast is even better now I've done nothing like I said between these two files this is just the way that they pop out and it seems to me that the photo on the right is clearer that it's a little sharper and that's Photomatix again uh, so 
um, you know, just a side by side comparison. This might be personal preference, but I do HDR simply because I'm trying to get as close to my human eye as possible with these shots. I need the detail to be there in the shadows because my eyes saw the detail perfectly clear. So that's what I'm going for. And I just see a, a lot more detail in the Photomatix image. Now, I really want to show you this because this will really is a great comparison. So here's the front window of the chapel. And if you look at the Adobe side over here in this first pane of glass, in the stained glass, you can see a huge difference in the detail in this area. And for me, uh, that's, that's really a, uh, a game killer as far as the Lightroom module goes. I'm not happy with the fact that I'm losing detail in a process where I'm trying to gain detail. You know, and that's really the killer for me. I mean, look at the detail here on the door and what's lost here. Just not acceptable, unfortunately. So they've, they've got, in, in my book, they've got a ways to go with this module. Uh, I'm sad that it's not what I expected it to be, I guess. But, you know, in a pinch, if you need to assemble an HDR, it will work. Um, and it will give you an image with 20 stops of light range on the exposure slider, which is, is great. But for me, uh, it, I'm going for detail, and I'm going for detail especially in the shadows. That's mainly, uh, I can't have any noise in the shadows, and that is my main reason for 32-bit HDR. So I will stick with the Photomatix 32-bit HDR plug-in for now. Hopefully, Adobe will take notice of this and make some changes for us. That'd be great. All right, guys, that's a wrap uh, for this time. Thanks for joining me. I hope you find this informative, and I'll see you next time.